Hey everyone, okay, so the dust has started to settle. AMD's Ryzen 7 line has launched and it's pretty much established now that while the processor is astonishingly good in aspects like productivity and multimedia workloads, gaming performance is currently off pace, but crucially, it's still more than good enough. So if your use case profile for your PC involves a mixture of heavy number crunching, video encoding, as well as gaming, Ryzen 7 has much to offer up against its Intel competitors. And funnily enough, that mixture of workloads is exactly how I personally use my PC. So the question is this, let's assume that I'm building a new computer. Now out of the trio of Ryzen products out there, which one would I buy? Okay then, so let's do the maths. Here's a look at the Ryzen 7 stack. All of the processors available offer eight physical cores and 16 threads. There's a variance in clock speeds, of course, with the bottom end Ryzen 7 1700 downclocked to a degree that actually makes it slip into a much lower TDP, 65 watts versus 95 watts on the higher end parts. But really, it's the frequency differential that is the only thing to separate each of the processors. AMD has left the cache size alone on all three products. So on the face of it, there's only 200 megahertz difference between the 1700X and the more expensive 1800X. So in theory, you lose around 5% performance, but you save around 20% of the price. Base and boost clocks are trickier with the 1700, but let's stick with the base here. Now, in theory, you lose about 17% performance compared to the 1800X, but you're only paying 66% of the cost. So how does this actually play out with real life workloads? Okay, so I ran all three processors through Cinebench R15, and yes, by and large, those clocks do correlate with an actual benchmark. And indeed, with a real use case scenario here, uh, H.264 encoding at 4K with handbrake, yeah, performance is once again tied pretty closely to the difference in clocks. You will note that in all cases, all three Ryzen chips are positively annihilating the Intel equivalents in terms of price versus performance. But there are two further aspects we need to consider here. We've recently seen that gaming performance doesn't follow the same trend versus Intel. And what I wanted to know going in was the extent to which frequency is tied into performance. And of course, what is the overclocking capabilities of each of the Ryzen 7s? I mean, why spend $500 on an 1800X if I can run the $330 1700 at 4 gigahertz? Okay, so onto the gaming tests first of all. As usual, I separate processor performance by using an overclocked Titan X Pascal at 1080p, running an ultra-level gaming experience. Now, the idea here is to ensure that the GPU is taken out of our results as much as possible, while at the same time, CPU and memory bandwidth are pushed hard, really hard. Now, the thing to remember here is that the actual real life difference between the Ryzen's will be less pronounced because after all, only some kind of benchmarking lunatic runs the insanely fast Titan at 1080p. But where you are CPU bound, the faster Ryzen's will offer a bit more performance. And even with our PC set up to monster the CPU, there are some scenarios where real life difference is minimal to non-existent. So with Assassin's Creed Unity, for example, just one frame per second separates 1800X from 1700X and another single frame down to the base 1700. The division, I mean, virtually no difference whatsoever. Par for the course really with those titles, of course. So let's look at more challenging fare. Ashes of the Singularity's punishing CPU benchmarks. Well, you can see three lines there representing more power in turn, but the reality, again, it's just a one frame per second difference. That counts for a little more when frame rates are this low, but the point is that the relative performance overall is still pretty slight. The most powerful Ryzen is only 5% faster than the weakest. Now, we've said in the past that Far Cry Primal is heavily dependent on single thread performance, so we'd expect to see a 3.6 gigahertz Ryzen handily beat the base 3 gigahertz entry level offering. And indeed it does, but the differential is still only in the region of 7%. Crisis 3, 8%. The biggest difference I could find came from The Witcher 3. 1800X is 5% faster than 1700X, 
and in turn it's 10% faster than the base 1700. So again, if you do the maths, saving 33% on the sticker price of your Ryzen for a performance differential that varies between 3% to 10% seems like a bit of a no-brainer to me. Now the Ryzen 7 1700 obviously uses less power at stock clocks too, so the pounds, pence, dollars, cents, whatever, that'll stack up over time too. Now, we're using fast 3200 MHz DDR4 RAM here, Flare X modules provided by G-Skill and validated for use with Ryzen. Now, cheaper kits are available, but you might like to consider this performance comparison. We downclock the RAM to base level 2133 MHz, paired it with the Ryzen 7, uh, 1800X that is, and compared it to the 1700 running with faster modules. Crisis 3 is the only game that actually runs faster on the more expensive processor in this comparison. Every other title in our test suite performs better on the much cheaper 1700 when paired with faster memory. Now that's food for thought. Now, something I should point out is that some non-gaming workloads don't seem too troubled by the difference in memory bandwidth. My handbraking codes seem to run just as fast no matter what kind of memory I used, fast or slow. But for gaming, memory frequency differentials clearly trump the small CPU clock differences between the three Ryzen's. So, my advice. Well, maybe consider spending less on your processor and more on your RAM. But let's talk overclocking, where the Ryzen 7 1700 makes an even stronger case. Now, ASUS motherboards like the Crosshair 6 Hero have a straight BIOS option to overclock any Ryzen to 4 GHz. And you know what? It works. 4 GHz is pretty much the most comfortable sweet spot for an all-core Ryzen 7 overclock, no matter if you're using 1800X, 1700X or 1700. Now, maybe you'll get 1 or 200 MHz more on the more expensive chips, but this is not going to be a game-changing proposition. 4 GHz is plenty fast, and with the 1700, it propels performance in all areas ahead of the stock 1800X. Okay, so let's go back to my handbrake benchmark. H.264 4K encoding saw the top-tier Ryzen hand in a 19.6 FPS average. With the 1700 boosted to 4 GHz on all cores, that benchmark rises to 20.2 FPS. So we're actually about 3% ahead here on a much cheaper chip and you can kind of rest easy in the knowledge that even if you bought the 1800X and overclock that you wouldn't be getting that much more capability if any. In terms of gaming performance I can confirm that all of the Ryzen's operating at 4 GHz hand in identical frame rates. Our results from all three chips with an overclock in place hand in scores within margin of error regardless of the game. So if we look at The Witcher 3 here for example this is a highly scalable title that puts CPU and memory subsystems under extreme load at Novigrad City. Aside from tiny in-the-moment variations, all three processors are effectively doing the same job with the same results. There aren't exactly huge gains overclocking to 4 GHz with the 1800X, but it's fair to say that you get many more percentage points when you do the same with a 1700. That Witcher benchmark posts a 12% boost, which is significant. And we actually see similar results in Rise of the Tomb Raider. Crisis 3 is big on multi-threading, similar to The Witcher 3, and still posts a 13% uplift, while Far Cry Primal, which really does like single-thread power, hands in a 14-point boost. So yeah, this 1700 is pretty awesome, right? Of course, there is a trade-off if you plan to overclock a 1700. Power consumption rises significantly. Our 1800X system pulls about 184 watts under load, the overclock 1700 raises that by around 45 watts. Now voltage tweaking in the BIOS could get that down, but it will vary depending on the individual chip. Okay, so look, here's the bottom line. Ryzen 7 1800X initially took the headlines as the fastest AMD flagship, but the price versus performance might make a lot of sense in non-gaming applications when compared to Intel, but the product itself is beaten by its Ryzen siblings. If you're not into overclocking, the 1700X effectively offers much the same experience overall in gaming and is only marginally slower than the top tier product. Just remember to put some of that $100 saving into faster memory. But it's the 1700 that I personally would buy. Now look, the i7-7700K is a touch more expensive but in most gaming scenarios it's a fair bit faster. But if you can show me an Intel chip with 8 cores, 16 threads that's capable of overclocking to 4 GHz 
and he's rather awesome at stuff other than gaming. Well, go right ahead. At $330, the base Ryzen 7 is one hell of a bargain. And for those of us who use their PCs for more than just gaming, it's an astonishingly good deal. And yeah, I think I've made the point there really, so I'm going to leave it there. Just remember that if you enjoyed this video, if you value the work that Digital Foundry does, well then please do like and subscribe. And remember that supporting us via Patreon not only helps us continue to do work like this, but also gives you access to ultra high quality encodes of everything we do. But that's all I have for you right now. As always, thanks for watching.